Good evening. The time is 01.57 New York local time. Frankfurt Stock Exchange opens in uh, three minutes. Um, in this recording, we are going to be trading a top step account. Um, unfortunately, I still haven't gotten there yet, so I have a lot of work to do. Thursday's uh, trading took me off guard. Um, so that being said, some changes that uh, I have made to my trading. So number one, you will notice that I'm only trading one contract, and that is to intentionally and very purposefully try and no matter how much drawdown I'm in, uh, and I'm in, what is that, 470 right now, I'm trying to protect what I have. So um, you will you only see me trade one contract. I'm a little bit spooked by the NASDAQ right now, so it's got me kind of spooked. Um, the other thing that will be a change for me is um, we are we are always going to aim for first targets, okay? So uh, whether it's an inefficiency or liquidity target, I'm kind of done trying to reach the maximum. You know, second and third targets are no longer my of of any concern to me, um, regardless of how mar how far a swing goes or how far the market goes. It's just not interesting to me to to have trades that go into uh, any amount of profit and then watch it come back and stop me out break even. That's just really not how I want to live my life. So uh, we will be going for low hanging fruit closest inefficiency or liquidity targets kind of regardless of regardless of what the market's going to do after that it really makes no difference to me so i suppose you would call that scalping right so starting out the recording of this session i'll probably let it go for uh i don't know hour um and maybe we'll get a couple trades in um yeah, I mean, I'm just no longer interested in, I'm not interested in big winners. I'm really not. Why do I say that? Because they're not reliable. First targets are pretty reliable. Second and third targets are not so reliable. So, other thing that you're going to be seeing me do pretty frequently is um, try and preserve my capital through break-even stops. I put them exactly on break-even. And yeah, sometimes... Pretty often, you will see me get stopped out. Uh, but I am trying to preserve the capital that I have and focus on that. So, all right. First trade here, number one. Didn't really have a multiplier entry, per se, but I saw that we had these very uh, equal highs, and so I would expect that to be ran, and we did. Okay. We're coming up. We ran these relative equal highs, and that was a small profit there. So I'll show you that execution. Uh, got long here and made seven points. Happy with that. I uh, was looking at our um, relative equal highs here as a very reasonable target. So the outline of a trade and a, a solid ICT trade, well, what is it? Well, it's a strong understanding of a multiplier so you're trying to find a multiplier on which to enter and then you're aiming for the first target could be an inefficiency target could be a higher low which is which is a liquidity target and and it's the first one not the second one not the third one however many points you missed out on doesn't matter you're trying to make money that's it it's all you're trying to do you should feel happy if you make five NASDAQ points. I mean, it's more points than you had before. So, all right. Uh, well, we got our first uh, execution there done on these relative equal highs. I saw that we had put those in and, and uh, obviously that was a nice clean target there. So, I'm gonna try and talk through this whole session, see what I'm seeing. We're coming back down into this order block here, and I want to see if price respects it. Uh, what would be the next kind of low-hanging fruit target? Um, say 75% of this wick inefficiency, so a premium. Uh, getting into a premium on that wick. Um, that high up there is, is obviously there as well. 
Let's take a look at what a premium of that green candle would be. At 1736, that would probably be a pretty re reasonable target. That's prior to even getting to the high, so I think that's a pretty reasonable target. We're coming up on uh, order block or black candle. Let's see if price kind of respects that. And then uh, go from there. Yeah, I pretty much only enter at the market now because I'm, I'm waiting. Waiting to see what price does. I'm not opposed to limit entries, but I, I'm willing to pay a few ticks just to see what price is up to. So, okay, I see T multiplier right here. If price is drawing higher, it should respect that black candle. All right, we're going into a discount on that black candle. Let's see if price respects that. And we can get some sort of reaction off that or if we plunge lower. And then we'll we'll look for the next multiplier. Would be that black candle right there to the upside. Yeah, it's a scalper's life for me, I think. So I'm really tired of open profit. Open profit kind of bothers me. It bothers me a lot. Is that Sibby? See if we reclaim that. See, it came down to below the midway point of that black candle. Next multiplier is that black candle. And then beyond that, tiny volume imbalance here and that black candle. And we'll see if those provide us uh, an entry opportunity, and then we'll look for kind of the most reasonable target. I mean, day trading really is, I don't know, I'm not a swing trader. I'm not, I'm not designed to be a swing trader. It irritates me too much. I don't like watching retracements at all. So, if I want to be a professional scalper, I know that it's got to be low leverage, fairly tight stops, and tight profit targets. So, this is our Frankfurt Stock Exchange open, 0200. Price has not delivered into this wick inefficiency a, a premium. So I would expect maybe we come up and run this buy side. Maybe. Just waiting to see. I'm watching for more information. Price came down into a discount of that black candle, respected it. We are trading uh, very efficiently right now. Sitting above the New York midnight open price. Yeah, I don't like open profits. I like realized profits a lot more. And the vast, like, most of my positions will go into profit, and so I'm pretty tired of not taking said profit. I'd be a very wealthy man right now if I took all my profit. Greed gets in the way. You can always re enter the market, guys. That's kind of the nature of high frequency trading. So we have this old Bissy down here that could be a, a draw on price. Um, we've also got this volume imbalance here. That could be a pretty reasonable draw on price as well. Um, and I would aim for just the high of it. All right. Trying to rack up points, guys. That's what we're trying to do. So that could be a turtle soup multiplier there. Come down, sweep that low, um, draw back down into this volume imbalance, sweep these lows, sweep that low. Just going to wait for a little bit more information. Let me get on the three minute chart. Okay. Yep, we're going to try short. 
Uh, stop is going to go just above that high. Stop there. And uh, we are going to aim for the top of that volume imbalance right there. So the low of that candle comes in at 701.75. And that's kind of our first inefficiency target. And um, break even stop will come in the market depending on how this plays out. Of course, price could be reacting off this black candle as well, go higher. In which case, I'll just, yeah, all right, it appears to be what it might be doing. I was really trying to wait for more information on that, play it safe. Uh, I'm just going to let this trade play out.
So, in terms of targets, uh, if this trade does come back into profit, there are these relative equal lows there. That is, um, sorry, equal lows. That's something I'm aiming for the busy undelivered portion of that. I think that's a pretty reasonable target. The trade moves back in our favor. Should want to come back to um, the undelivered portion here of that bissy and just aim for the the high of the bissy. I think that's pretty um, reasonable. But you could also aim for these equal lows here as well. There's also an old bissy here. Part of that is undelivered as well.
All right, I'm going to move the stop to break even if it goes much lower. So, you know, not much has changed. It is finding a little bit of support here on this black candle. And we'll see if it punches through that and punches below the open of that green candle. If, it, if we start to see trading down to the bottom red line here, that's a very good sign that we're on side. And in ICT trading, you want to, you know, you want to see signs that you are on side, meaning your your trade is on the right side of the marketplace. So how do you know if you'd be on side here? You want to see a candle close down here. Okay, and that will close below that bullish order block.
All right, um, waiting to see if we get some trading below that low down in here. taking the risk off. So on a normal day and a week that's not packed with economic calendar events, I would not expect the, the high of the day to have been put in. But that might be the high of the day at 0200. That's not the typical time that I would expect the high to be put in. But the way that price has been behaving, the uh, economic calendar coming up on Friday, um, yeah, that could be the high. Kind of expecting that that might actually be it. So why would the high want to come in hours earlier than it usually does? Well, I mean, basically, if it's price is in a hurry to get to lower destinations, then price would put in a high right there at 0200. So that could be your high for the whole 24 hour banking cycle right there for Friday. Well, maybe not. So we did get some trading below the open of that candle. We've not got a, we've not got that five minute close below the low that I would like to see. I'm gonna go ahead and move the stop. Uh, three more ticks in profit.
my speculation would be that um, if you see that that is the high, so if a high comes in and, and is respected at 0200, probably big black candle today on Friday, like big retracement. That's a very early hour of the day for it to put in a high and to respect it. Normal sort of situation, you would expect it to come in between 0300 and 0530, maybe 0540 during the London AM session. Not really during Frankfurt, or especially not on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange Open. But if it's going to be a big black candle day, then yeah, it would, it would put it in pretty early. Two hours into your 24-hour banking cycle, put in the high for a big black day. You know, that would be that would be expected. And then we're probably going to just focus on shorts then for the most of the day because um, the draw, right? So. Price might be in a hurry to get back to this regular trading hours gap that we made between Thursday and Friday. You can see it there. You might see price react off this black candle here. Um, I'd like to see a good close here and draw back down to our uh, inefficiency down here, our BISI. And um, I'm really working on using reasonable profit targets. I uh, So that's why I'm just aiming for that and the top side of it, not the bottom side of it. 
So I want to realize profit. Okay. Don't want to see price trade up there at this point. So you got to remember your economic calendar and, and how that's going to affect your normal day-to-day -day operations. You have to. So normally I would not expect that to be the high for the 24-hour banking cycle. I would expect price to come back up and, take, and make a new high. Being, the, being what price did yesterday and being that we have another high-impact news, news event on Friday, Uh, that could be the high for the whole day. Unexpected, usually, for 0200 to put in the high. But uh, yeah, given all the circumstances, that might be that might be the high for the whole day. Okay, so that was a pretty strong reaction there off that black candle. I'm going to wait to see what price does, but thinking about going ahead and, and, and cashing in here. Mm. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it. I'm going to let it play out. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that order block there. Will the shorter block, and we got a reaction off of it. So now we'll see if um, it wants to punch through or not. I do like that there's an order block in between price and my stop. This is also high low high. That's ICT bullish breaker there. You see a high, a low, and then a high. So that should be a block on price as well as the green candle and it's a very good algorithmic signature that we put in that green candle before going down that that would suggest to me the price does intend to go further that would be my expectation 
So pr just prior to falling into a new liquidity, if you see an opposite colored candle, like a green candle, like that, that's a very good sign that price price does actually intend on coming coming down further. That would be my expectation. In day trading, you have to have expectations. Why? Well, so you kind of know what normal operations are, and then you're not caught too off guard. Like you have to have a baseline. It's kind of like um, true lie, lie detection. In order to see if someone's lying, you need to know what that person's baseline is. So you learn Price's kind of baseline behavior, and then when it deviates from that, so you're not caught off guard, which is something I still have to learn myself. Along with, you know, this is good risk management. It's one contract. We're not over leveraged. I've moved the stop down, but not too far. And I'm aiming for a very reasonable target. So this is professional caliber trading. Definitely. And I, and I say that in full sincerity. What you're seeing on your screen right now, this is professional caliber trading. For sure. And some of you are like, well, that sounds arrogant. I mean, I've been putting a lot of work in. And I can tell when I'm doing things professionally when I'm not. To be a good day trader, you must be a master introspector. you got to know. Because when you're actually trading, you're going to get in sort of an automation and a trance, basically. So there's that, like, you have your analyst, you have the judge, and you have, like, you have different parts of you. So the Reese that is talking to you right now is different from the Reese that put on that trade. Reese the trader put on the trade, but Reese the analyst is telling you what price is doing. And then Reese the risk manager and, and money manager is telling you this is professional caliber trading. Reasonable profit target. Okay. Stop that's not too close, but also we're locking in open profit. And we're using one contract. This is all professional caliber trading, for sure. And we waited to see the market develop before we entered. We analyzed that price, that might be the high for the whole day, considering our uh, economic calendar. And so you're, you're, yeah, I feel very good about, about what I'm doing right here, for sure. I feel like this is professional caliber trading. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just put that above that candle's high. I wouldn't really want to see price get back up there. And, and if it does, then we'll probably look to enter short. Um, looking at the fact that the high was put in at 0200, if we don't make a new high during the London session, I will only be shorting today. And that's going to give me my daily bias. And then I'm only going to take short trades for the day. Similarly, if we go back to Thursday, okay, and let's go to New York Open Midnight and, and let me show you that. If you see that price puts in the 24-hour low at 0105 and then, and then actually is like respecting it, you only go long. It doesn't matter what you're seeing, you only go long. Because that is not a normal time for the low to be put in. That's like three hours earlier than, than when it should be put in. Which was kind of indicative of what price was going to do in hindsight. Meaning I should have only taken trades in the long direction. For sure. So that was just a mistake in price analysis. But um, yeah, I want to see if price uh, comes in, makes a new high during the London session, or if that high is going to be respected on Frankfurt Stock Exchange, which is that's a, like I said, that's a very early high. That's that's like two to three hours before I would expect price to put in a high. So if, if that is the high for the 24-hour day. Then, then we're looking at a fairly substantial move down today, would be my thinking.
if you are expecting, like I am, for today to be a trending day, uh, you're just going to feel better if you only take shorts. Doesn't mean that there won't be any profitable trade setups on the long side, but you're going to feel a lot more comfortable if you're only shorting. Like yesterday, you should only be longing, really. I mean, you can obviously play it on both sides, but I mean, realistically, here, you're, you're, you would feel most satisfied with life if you only took longs. Yeah, I mean, okay, we, we got one good retracement. I actually did play that to the short side. But you should have been looking for any sort of multipliers that you could get. And there was a multiplier right there. There was a breakaway gap. So you treat me right. Um, all right, if this trade works out, I will call it a video. So if this trade gets stopped, stopped out in profit, or if it hits my buy limit, I'm going to call that a video. I'll show you the executions we have thus far. Um, we did take a long that we covered there, uh, and then we got short, we covered it there, um, and we are looking at a snell. We've cut down our drawdown by $200. So, all right. Um, I'm going to wait at this point. I want to see if price comes in and wants to make a new high on the London Cash Open. I'll just leave the recording going. Uh, if it does just want to turn back lower, I'm going to wait to see if I get another multiplier. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I should have put the stop up here. Friday is going to be like a consolidation day, then I would expect it to come up, make a new high. Do that. Friday is going to be a very bearish day. I expect that high to remain intact. I'm just going to let things develop. Wait until the London cash opens, see if we get a silver bullet.
Yeah, exiting and re-entering trades too quickly is not something I want to be in the habit of, so even if this trade does go to the destination without me, uh, I'm okay with that. I'm trying to be a professional, um, and a professional does not re-enter a trade too quickly. Gotta wait, gotta wait for another sign, another signal. I just try to prove the stop loss on the next trade. So we're gonna wait for another multiplier. So why the sell stop there? Well, that would be decent looking order block if we traded below. I'll just just hit it right on the open, opening volatility. All right, we're we're, we're filled short. I'm gonna aim for that same bissy that I aimed for before, just the top side of it. Okay, we're filled. I'm going to take a quick break, guys. See the execution there? We got short uh, there on that green candle's low, and we covered as price came to the top side of this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. And now we're down 126.64, so we're back about 300 on the session. And uh, I'll, call that, I'll call that a recording. So, trying to show you responsible trading, um, scalping. It's kind of what I... I'm passionate about, uh, I, you know, I don't care how far the market goes down, guys. Go down another 300 points. I um, am just happy to, to 
get a quick and easy profit, realize it, and move on with life. So, I'm really born to be a scalper, guys. That's kind of, I know what I am. I know I am, I am not meant to be a swing trader. So, scalping it is for me, guys. Um, all right. Uh, London Cash open in 30 seconds. We'll watch that together. So we'll let the market develop from here. I'm going to take a break. Bye-bye.